Caribbean people are very, very musical from the way we walk, the way we speak, the amount of dancing that we do, the way that we prepare our food. You know, music is a very integral part of our lives. It's actually stitched into the fabric of the Caribbean. The Power to Make a Difference program made it possible for me to take my group in to Princess Elizabeth Center, St. Mary's Home, St. Dominic's Home, Maximum Security Prison, and Youth Training Center in Golden Grove to be able to play music for them, do workshops with them, teach them about music. Even in the young children and the young musicians, it brought this new energy in terms of the fact that we were bringing knowledge to them, teaching them about music from around the world. And so the, the feedback was very positive. So I'm grateful to Republic Bank for making it possible for us to take my group in to, to make a difference for these people. To the Deputy Deans of the St. Augustine Campus, Dr. Deirdre Charles, Director, the Division of Student Services and Development. Director and Staff of the Marketing and Communications Department. Managers from the Division of Student Services and Development. Ms. Lynette Joseph Brown, Program and Research Officer, Office of the Deputy Principal. Ms. Travis Sammy Daniel, Corporate Sponsor, Republic Bank, and all other Republic Bank representatives here with us this afternoon. Mrs. Goldenly Bruce, our featured speaker, other campus representatives, participating students on the session here this afternoon. Welcome to the annual World of Work program seminar. My name is Kathy Ann Lewis, manager of the Careers, Co-Curricular and Community Engagement Department within the Division of Student Services and Development here on the St. Augustine campus. The overarching thrust of the DSSD, the Division of Student Services and Development, is to support you, our students, in becoming the ideal UE graduate who is well-rounded and poised to, to assume roles in many dynamic areas within this region and the world at large. The Department of Careers, Co-Curricular and Community Engagement is charged with marrying the functions of career development and management with co-curricular and community engagement in order to provide a holistic approach to helping you move through your personal decision-making within the walls of, and as you transition out of the secure walls of the university. The University of the West Indies and Republic Bank Limited World of Work program was designed to prepare our final year students with the skills needed for the successful transition into the work environment. A world which is no longer traditional, sequential, or filled with predictable transitions. However, since its inception, the World of Work program has been a resource oasis whereby you are coached on resume writing techniques, receive information from employers and leading experts in the region and around the world, practice your interviewing skills, create or grow your online presence, and meet recruiters from international and local organizations. This year, the revised structure of the program is meant to provide you with the skills to make career decisions in an unpredictable and ever-changing global, regional, and national landscape. So whether you logged on to the website for updates on the University of the West Indies and Republic Bank World of Work program, or visited our Facebook or Instagram pages, received emails from the marketing and communications department, or attended one of our resume booth camps, you would have undoubtedly received many gems of knowledge on your quest for success. 
I want to encourage you to register for the program if you have not done so already. It's the only way you can be sure to avail yourself of the many opportunities we have planned for you this year. So visit the website at www.sta.uwi.edu backslash wow, W-O-W. Click at the top right-hand corner, you will see the button for registration. Click that button and it's going to take you to the platform where you can register and engage with all the previous sessions we recorded and put there for your benefit. Very soon, we will upload the link for you to begin practicing your virtual interview skills. Use it to your advantage. In approximately three weeks or so, you will have the opportunity to participate in an actual virtual interview with our industry partners. Do not deny yourself of this opportunity. This is one time, however, when you may not have the choice to attend an online session in your traditional pajamas and you won't be able to keep your cameras off. You must dress for an actual interview. There are a number of sessions we still have planned for you including creating your LinkedIn profile, overcoming interview anxiety, and this in addition to the other three interview sessions which were held previously. Job search skills for the new graduate and the various company recruiting sessions. Students, we employ you. You must remain engaged. To get the information on these additional sessions that we will facilitate for you, log on to the site and remember, check your emails. And so in closing, and by the end of the program, the Careers Co-Curricular and Community Engagement Team would like that you, our students, obtain the necessary information to transition as seamlessly as possible to the next step in your career journey. We want, you to, we want to take this opportunity to remind you that the power is in your hands. You have the power to make the difference. And with the assistance of UWE, and the Republic Bank Make a Difference program, we have all certainty that you will go into whichever sphere you choose and make the difference. So on behalf of the UE and our corporate sponsor, Republic Bank, and the Power to Make a Difference initiative, let me congratulate you for making the decision to avail yourself of the tools and information you have already received and the gems of knowledge you will receive today. Students, colleagues, our sponsors, welcome to the UE Republic Bank Limited World of Work Seminar Program 2021. Thank you. And at this point, I want to introduce you to bring greetings on behalf of the University of the West Indies, Mrs. Lynette Joseph Brown, Program and Research Officer representing the Office of the Deputy Principal. Mrs. Brown. Thank you, Katyan. University colleagues, Mrs. Travis, Sammy Daniel, and other Republic Bank employees. Ms. Golda Lee Bruce, feature speaker and students. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to bring welcome remarks at this afternoon's World of Work seminar on behalf of the Deputy Principal, Professor Indar Ramnarain. A special welcome to all of you student participants, 
Your presence here, even as this year's program occurs on an online platform, demonstrates your eagerness to take advantage of opportunities that can help you gain an edge in this very competitive world of work. But first of all, I must convey to UE St. Augustine deepest appreciation to Republic Bank Limited for agreeing to be yet again this year's title event sponsor. You know, over the years, Republic Bank has displayed its enduring commitment to corporate social responsibility by supporting this campus in various ways. And the UE St. Augustine campus is happy to have a long-standing relationship with this organization and to partner in this particular endeavor again. Ms. Goldalee Bruce, thank you for taking the time to be a part of this World of Work seminar. It's our pleasure to have someone like you share your experiences with our students. We are sure that you have much to impart this afternoon and trust that our students will be inspired by your journey from student to professional. And students, we cannot emphasize enough how invaluable this World of Work program will prove to be as you prepare to embark on professional careers. It's a tough realization, but not every university degree will automatically lead you directly to a dream job. In fact, often a degree is simply one part of the required minimum qualifications for employment. Furthermore, these challenging economic times have created a tough job market. Now more than ever, you will need to be the best candidate for the jobs that are available. So we urge you to take advantage of every aspect of the World of Work program. You know, the world around us is rapidly changing and types of work and industries are evolving. And so each of the activities in the World of Work program have been carefully crafted to provide you with foundational skills to ensure that you're adequately prepared for the changing face of employment and the employment process. And we hope that by the end of the program, these skills will help to distinguish you as potential employees who are agile and resilient and able to navigate what lies ahead. In concluding, I have to say a special thank you on behalf of the Deputy Principal, to Ms. Cathy Ann Lewis, the staff of the Division of Student Services and Development, and the Marketing Communications Office for coordinating this activity despite the restrictions that we face due to the pandemic. Also, thanks to all the other persons who out of a commitment to the program in one way or another have contributed to make this cycle of the world of work exercise a reality. We trust that this will be another successful year and we wish you all the best. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Joseph Brown. Children, I can't hear it because your mics are muted, but I feel the energy feel of the energy. <laughs> I feel the energy. And Kershell, I have not forgotten. You promised you were going to um, open up your video so we can see. So students, we do miss you all um, face to face and we hope we have an opportunity to see you soon. It's, trust me. It's not the same without you here. And whenever we meet you online, all videos are off. But I know you all are wearing very beautiful pajamas, so that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Lynette Joseph Brown. And those words of encouragement for our students, which they would need uh, maybe even more than other years, moving into the future and making some very critical career decisions. And now to move our program along, I would like to welcome Mrs. Travis Sammy Daniel, manager, Republic Bank manager at the UE branch, St. Augustine. Good afternoon to the featured speaker, Mrs. Golda Lee Bruce, chair, Ms. Katia Lewis, director of student services, Dr. Deidre Charles, Program and Research Officer, Lynette Joseph Brown, Senior Lecturers, Department Deans, 
my colleagues at Republic Bank, and final year students, welcome. I'm sorry we can't be together right now, but I am grateful that we can still come together virtually. The world of work has been turned upside down because of this global pandemic. And every worker, every business, and every corner of the world has been affected tremendously. As you may already be aware, global, global powerhouses like the UK and Canada are entering into their third and fourth lockdowns, which means many more people are now faced with different working situations who are poised to lose their job. Now, this is not meant to scare you. Quite the opposite, in fact. As young people, you are much more equipped to handle this new world compared to people like me and many other employees around the world. What hasn't changed is that after graduation, the job market will still be flooded with bright, eager young minds like yourselves ready to start careers. And even in these hardest times, businesses need capable talent to ensure their future success. Now, more than ever, we need the right people to navigate us through this new normal. We need young minds that can help us determine how we rebuild. And I ask that you make your community your priority. To not just rebuild society after the pandemic, but to create a more just world as the nation recovers. As you move on from this place and embark on life in the workforce, at some point you may begin to feel like it's not going too fast. I encourage you to find that one thing that allows you to unwind and refocus when life seems too much to handle. Do not downgrade your dreams and do not do this pan has shown that our children, our youth, our future is poised for a world that is going to be significantly different from what we are accustomed to. As a partner with the UB, we are happy to see the university harness this inexorable drive among the youth of our nation to create capable people. The World of Work WOW program will significantly add value to developing your career potential and ensure you are prepared for the changes that are to come no matter what field or opportunity you choose to take on. At the beginning of 2020, many around the world are on track to enter thriving job markets, but then COVID-19 hit. And everything has changed as layoffs and closures caused unemployment to increase. Now, many who are still employed are working remotely as day to day responsibilities have changed dramatically. So the important thing to remember about career paths is that they don't have to last forever. As you get older, your interests and your skills will evolve. As you get older, my advice is to open to the change. Don't be afraid to try something new. You have more role models, more resources, more tools, technology, and talents than my generation. Right, so no better generation is poised to remake this world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. So done some wonderful gems that you are receiving here from our Republic Bank representatives and our UB representatives. So before we go on to what I know we are all waiting for, which is to hear from our feature speaker, we are gonna have a couple giveaways. So if you look to my right here, you'll see we have some giveaways. Guys, I took a peep into this bag, trust me. You all want this bag. It's filled with goodies. Okay, we also want to prepare you for your virtual interviews and all the sessions you will have. And of course, the world of work, 
Many of us will be working virtually for years to come. And the beautiful Yui um, gift bag as well. So our first set of giveaways, which will be done by random draw, and this is for students who have registered. So if you did not go to the website, sta.uwi.edu backslash wow and registered for the World of Work program, your name will not be in the virtual picker. So we wanna first give away two of the headsets. So let's do our random draw. If you registered, you're in line for the draw. Do we have our virtual picker? Okay, so one pair of headsets. Okay, you can call me Vana for this section. And let's do the virtual picker. Let's see which student is gonna cut the price. Okay, so let's do another draw. I'm gonna ask a question and the first student who puts the answer in the chat, my staff is gonna be looking. The first student that puts the answer in the chat, they will have the opportunity to win the prize. And this prize is by our wonderful sponsor, Republic Bank Limited. Guys, it's a heavy bag, huh? If you don't want the bag, I can have it, but please win it for me because I cannot participate in the draw. So the question to you students, the world of work sponsored by UWE Republic Bank is part of an overarching program run by Republic Bank Limited, where they partner with a number of communities and a number individuals to make an impact. What is the name of that program? My staff will tell me. I'm looking. Yes, Jared Fraser. It's the power to make a difference program. And I want to tell you that Republic Bank has partnered with us students where before I came to the university, I came and I met Republic Bank, partnering with the university to make a difference in the lives of our young people, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but all students at the university. So it means Trinidad and Tobago, the region, and all around the world where we have students registered. So that's excellent. My staff will take a note of your name. The next question. Goes. Again, we are looking at a Republic Bank prize. What's the name and this is an easy one. What's the name of the representative of the Republic Bank Limited that gave us those wonderful gems of knowledge today. Can't someone tell me who's the first person? Travis, Sammy, Travis, Travis, something, Travis, Sammy. I'm going up for the first complete name. Amna, Travis, Sammy, oh, no. Crystal, Travis, Sammy, Daniel. You're trying to re rename as Daniel Amna. It's Travis, Sammy, Daniel. But I do know someone that's called Sammy Davis but that's not Travis. So students, let me introduce to you today our feature speaker, who's gonna bring more gems of knowledge. Golden Lee Bruce wants to leave the world better than she found it. She believes in the power of stories 
to motivate young people and to transform lives. As a journalist and news anchor for over a decade, Golda told the stories of the people of the Caribbean. She continues this work as a development storyteller and communications specialist. As a presenter, speaker, and writer, Golda uses her platform to inspire young people in particular. She encourages them to aspire beyond their circumstances. Something she was encouraged to do as a student. Golda earned her undergraduate degree in media and communications from the University of the West Indies, Mona and her graduate degree in journalism from Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism in New York. She was a recipient of the Arthur N. Taylor Scholarship from Columbia University and an ambassadorial scholarship from the Rotary Foundation. Golda is an alumna of the Thomson Reuters Foundation in London, a CNN International Fellow, and a Penn Kemba Forum Fellow of the National Endowment for Democracy in Washington, DC. Golda believes that with faith and perseverance, any dream is possible. This is what she hopes to impart to every person who crosses her path. It is also a lesson that she hopes to teach her son Issa and her daughter Nelo. Golda lives with her family in Maryland, USA. Students, I welcome to the platform, Mrs. Golda Lee Bruce, Caribbean storyteller. Golda. Thank you so much for that warm welcome and introduction. Um, I should also add that I'm joining you from a space that I use, which is a bedroom, which is also my office. And I think it really sets the tone for our discussion this morning, which I think will be more of a, a candid talk than a feature address. I've heard quite a few people say already that you know you regret that you're not there in person and this is a virtual meeting. Well, I don't regret it because had it not been a virtual meeting, I would not be here. And I'm really, really, really honored and grateful every time I have an opportunity to speak with young people, especially um, UE students, given that I see myself in you. I was where you are some, yeah, 15 years ago, somewhere around there. And um, I know the feelings and I know the journey. I know the anxiety. I know what it feels like when you have exams around the corner. I actually know how it feels to miss an exam and have to take a whole other course over summer. I know a lot of what you're feeling. And even though I didn't have to do it during a pandemic, I think I can still somewhat identify with a lot of your emotions at this time. And so I just felt as though I would share with you in a very candid way, um, what I believe to be some key characteristics for survival and for success in the actual world of work. You know, that the world of work sounds so big and so intimidating, but really and truly it's just the place where we go in order to live up to our full potential and to get paid while doing it, right? So I wanted to start by saying that the world has definitely changed. I know you have heard that a thousand times, right? <laughs> but the truth is that it has changed. But do I think that this change is abnormal? Not really anymore. Perhaps at the start of the pandemic, I felt like, oh my God, so much is happening. It's so much change, it's so rapid. We're never gonna be the same. You know, there was that moment of panic. And now I feel like this is just the way things are. This is just the world that we live in today. This is just the time that we're in. 
things change and they're going to continue to change. And so we can either, you know, spend three months as I did in a state of panic and a state of shock, complaining about working from home and, and you know, all of the distractions and my children are here and you're going to hear my daughter, I'm sure she's going to make her presence felt very soon. Um, you could do that or you could simply adjust, you could pivot, you could change, you could do what it takes to live in this world that is now defined by rapid uh, technological and environmental change. You can change as well. And so while the world is changing, and I believe that our world is now defined by change, um, I feel that there are some things that have remained the same and that will remain the same. And I like to call these things virtues. And every time I have you know, the opportunity to speak to a group of young people, I, I think that there are many people who are talking to you about the actual scientific steps that you need to take, right? The resume writing, uh, preparing your mock interviews. There are people who are telling you, who are guiding you in terms of what career paths you should look into. And so I feel like my responsibility is to talk about things that you may not necessarily be looking at, but which I believe are important for you to survive and to thrive in any environment. And so I've highlighted three of those things, but I, I call myself a storyteller. And so I'd like to start with a little story. In 2005, I was, a, I was coming out of second year, going into third year in my course uh, in broadcast journalism. And we all had to do internships in that summer. We had to do an internship in order to graduate from Karima. And I did an internship at TV6. And uh, I mean, I don't know how many of you have actually done media internships, but I think that they are a little different from um, other types. It's a lot of what I would like to call now dog work, right? I remember being put into a, a a closet full of tapes, a tape room. And somebody saying to me, you know, organize this tape room. And I'm like, this is 20 years of footage on beta tapes. What am I supposed to do in here? And I had on a nice pair of white pants that I really love. By the time I left, the pants were gray. Either way. Um, so I did that internship at TV6. And what that internship did for me was to open the door uh, for an actual, or what I thought would be an actual job at another station when it opened the following year. You realize that I am speaking in code now at another station that opened the following year. And so when I graduated, I went, I, I came back to Trinidad on the 2nd of June, somewhere around there. And I went into work at this new station on the 12th of June. And I was really excited to have the opportunity and so happy that as an intern, I had made myself useful enough for the people now opening this station to even consider me for a job. The long story short is that it wasn't an actual job. Um, I was there for three months and for that entire three months, I wasn't paid at all. I kept hearing about you know, you'll soon be on the payroll, we're working out your contract, but day after day, I continued to go. I continued to go to the job, even though I was putting a strain on my family, because obviously, I had to taxi into Port of Spain, I had to eat, you know, there were different things that I needed money for. And so I was there, not being paid and, and actually spending money in order to come to this job and work as well, or what I thought was a job. And there was this one particular day when I came to work, and this is 2006 guys, so, so work with the fashion timeline here. I came to work and I had on a pair of pants that belonged to my sister, a pair of trousers, and they were what are now known as cropped pants. My boss at the time, who was not paying me, um, said to me that the pants were inappropriate for work. And she asked me to go home and change them. What she didn't know was that I only had money to go one way, which was back home. I did not have money to travel back into town on that day. I had reached basically the end of the road. And I remember walking out of the office and, and it was a joke in the office that I had on these pants and they were inappropriate. And how could I go on assignment, even though I wasn't being paid, right? I, I look back at the absurdity of it now, but it was such a learning experience for me. 
And I walked out of the office and I was crying. I was distraught because I thought they have no idea what it has taken for me to be here and to continue to be here. But I can't remember what exactly happened on that day. I think maybe one of my family members bailed me out and I went to my change and I went back into the office. But it taught me a really, really valuable lesson that I, I considered a lot when I was in management that, you know, we don't know what our employees are going through and we don't know how our actions are affecting them. You know, we don't know what brave face they're putting on. Not only was that, not only did that lesson come, but so many other lessons in that just one interaction about, you know, showing up the next day, you know, putting on a brave face about always going after you want what you want, regardless of how you feel, you know, having discipline in that sense. And I'm so happy that I went home, I changed the pants and I went back. And I told that story to quite a few people and many of them said, you know, I wouldn't have gone back. But I have to tell you that I, I am really happy that I made the decision to do that because what happened after that, what the, the series of events that transpired have led me to where I am now. And had I given up at that point, I wouldn't have been you know, I wouldn't have gone on to spend many successful years in media. And perhaps I'll start there. It's three things that I would like to share with you. Three virtues that I believe are unchanging in this world that is changing so rapidly. And the first of them is discipline. I read something the other day that said, everything you want is on the other side of consistency. Now what those nice little quotes and sayings on Facebook and Instagram don't say, is about the pain and about the hurt and about the struggles that you encounter as you are being consistent. And I was already in a dark place going into that office every day and not being paid. I remember people, you know, getting their pay slips around me and I'm sitting there thinking, when will somebody notice that I'm here and that I'm working? It turns out that the people who noticed me were the ones watching the television and hearing my voice at that time. And so I was able to move into another newsroom quite seamlessly because I had been doing work. But discipline is hard. It's, it's, it's one of those words that we hear all the time. Have discipline with your work, have discipline with your eating, have discipline with your exercise. But actually achieving it is quite difficult. And it takes a certain level of mental resilience in order to do it. And my admonition and my encouragement to you today is to be disciplined, to set goals, and to go after them single-mindedly. Perhaps you have many goals in your mind at this point in time, many things that you could be. I'd say simple advice, narrow it down. In my case, when I was you know, coming into the newsroom, what I wanted to be at that point in time was a very strong news producer. And I thought, if I go home and I stay at home and I let this defeat defeat me, then what other chances are there for me? And so I reframed my hurt into a sort of, uh, to, to focus on the opportunity that was there. And there are a lot of people who would say that I was wrong to do that, but I don't believe I was. I think sometimes when you, when you are going towards something, the obstacles that come in your way take many different forms. They take the form of offense, they take the form of prejudice, they take the form of injustice, they take the form of um, unfairness and, and you could, in all fairness, back away and say, I won't be treated this way, or I don't deserve to be treated this way. And perhaps you don't. And it's up to you on a personal level to decide what you want to do or, or what you will tolerate or what you won't. But in terms of my boss saying to me that my, you know, my pants were inappropriate and laughing about it, I felt that it was embarrassing, it was offensive, but it wasn't enough to stop me on the journey. And so I went along with it. And things are going to pop up. Disappointment is going to pop up. Failure is going to pop up. Unfairness is going to pop up. You're going to meet those people who don't like you because you are you. Oh my God, my life is full of those people. I just, you know, <laughs> I can't count them, you know. Don't like you because you are you. Don't want to have anything to do with you. And okay, fine, fine. But is that going to stop you? Is that going to slow you down? Set your goals and go after them. In this world that is changing rapidly, whatever the situation may be, whatever the environment may be, 
go after your goals, decide what they will be, write them down. At the start of every year, I write down my goals for the year. I only started doing it about three years ago, but I have to tell you, it has absolutely transformed my life. Last year, I wrote down some really audacious goals. I was writing them and I was like, ha, 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 Boulder, not going to happen. And by the end of the year, I looked back and I thought, my God, what could happen if you just put your power, you align your power and your energy towards your goals? You take it away from the criticism. You take it away from the haters. You take it away from the distractions. You take it away from the Netflix and you put it on your goal. What happens then? Could you imagine if you employed your full potential at something? What could result? I would be very excited to see it. So my first piece of advice to you today, be disciplined, build discipline. If you don't feel very disciplined right now, set a small goal, take baby steps, baby steps along the way. And after a while, you look back and you, you will be surprised at what you could achieve simply by setting a goal and going after it. I wish I could talk more about this because there's some personal goals that I've set and I'm just like, I would love to tell you more, but you'll find out in due time. Um, I, blown away, blown away by what just a little bit of discipline will do. So that's my first thing. The second thing, the second unchanging virtue in this changing world is that of teachability. So what is this teachability thing? Basically, guys, you don't know everything. I don't know everything. None of your lecturers or advisors or supervisors know everything. We don't recognize that and recognize that you can learn something from everyone. Oh, that's good. I like that. You can learn something from everyone. You tend to think, and there's this thing that happens where you believe that you can only learn from people who have achieved more than you or who you think have achieved more than you. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You will find that a lot of people in corporate environments and media environments, a lot of the things that I learned came from people that you would not expect, came from janitors and security guards. A lot of how to navigate comes from different places in an organizational hierarchy. But apart from that, teachability is something that rests inside of you. It is just an ability, a, a desire to want to learn, a desire to know that, okay, maybe I do not know this very well. Maybe I have a degree in engineering, but someone who doesn't can teach me something. That is extremely powerful. I've been in many positions where you know, we are recruiting um, different people for internships or whatever the case may be. I've been in many different situations like that. And what you find is that resumes at a certain level come in looking almost the exact same way. There's this degree, there's that degree, there's this social work, there's this hobby, there's this um, professional affiliation, that committee. And yes, go after those things by all means. I have, and I still try to. But at the end of the day, what differentiates you from the other person? Dare I say that you are differentiated by your attitude, by your willingness to learn, by your humility. And I have found that in a situation where we had three interns or four interns, the ones who were willing to learn, who were willing to say, I don't know this, I may be wrong, who were willing to put in a lot of work and then have that work turned on its head by someone saying, I don't like this, let's try it again. That person is invaluable in any organization at any time. Everybody wants to work with a person who can be taught, who wants to learn, who desires to build themselves even more than they are. What employers don't want, I mean, that's a big generalization, but what I would say I don't want is someone who comes into an environment believing that they know everything about it, that they know what's best, that they can figure it out, that they can work on their own. People want someone who will fall seamlessly into a team and work well with that team. Still a struggle for me, I'll be honest with you, but I think that having the um, ability to to reflect and to do introspection and to realize that you don't know everything. I don't know everything <laughs> is big, is big. And acknowledging that you can learn a lot from many different types of people goes a long, long way. So my final virtue that I'd like to share with you, unchanging virtue in a changing world, is that of humility. 
I was thinking about it and teachability is very closely linked to humility, but humility is just a little bit different. And I love talking about it because I feel like talent, we, 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 get, um, we get told all throughout our school lives that talent is important and talent will take you far. Talent is the spark, discipline is the flame. And humility is the thing that is fanning that flame, in my eyes. That's the way I think about it. A humble person who realizes I've come this far by God's grace and I still have very far to go, goes a really, really, really long way. That person who understands that I don't know everything, but perhaps I could try something. Perhaps my effort is worth something. That to me is the kind of folk I want to be around. And I have seen in my own life, you know, and I'm sharing openly with you guys. So this is, I don't know if they're going to put this on the internet, but if it gets there, God help me. I have seen where I was not the most talented, was not the best, was not the outstanding one when it came to the task. But I have seen where I, get, I got opportunities because I was just willing to humble my damn self. And so <laughs> I hope that language is okay, but speaking frankly to you, I feel like that is a really, 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 really important lesson. And there's so much in the world these days that is telling us the opposite. There is so much that is saying to us, you know, it's important, I agree that it's important to have confidence and it's important to speak up for yourself and to reject imposter syndrome. But it is also important to do that from a place of humility, from a place of teachability and with strong discipline. Those are my sharings with you today. And I'm happy to take some questions if you have them. I don't know if any came up in the chat, but I, I, I'm always afraid that I've said too much <laughs> or that I've shared beyond. But yeah. I'm happy to share with you. I'm happy to share my experiences with you because I believe that they have been life changing for me. And I think the world is changing, but some things never change. And those are three things that I believe don't change. Discipline, teachability, and humility, mixed in with a little respect, can take you very, very, very far. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Golda. No, you have not said enough. And if the <laughs> chat is anything to go by, apparently you have not said enough. Students are looking for a part two and a part three. <laughs> Yeah, basically, um, you know, I just want to thank you, but let's, um, students, if you have any questions, Golda, you're blowing up our chat, you're blowing up <laughs> our chat. Students, if you have any questions at this time, um, Golda, Golda would be willing to field those questions. Mm -hmm. So just put your questions in the chat and um, we'll feel it. Um, we have a question from Joaquin Golda. Mm -hmm. Joaquin, want, he says, I'd like to ask, what are your coping mechanisms for whenever you feel defeated within your career or daily work life? Oh, that's good. That's good. That's uh, good. <laughs> because that happens, that happens more often than you think. It happened yesterday. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. um, so over time, I have learned that a disappointment or defeat could actually be an opportunity in disguise. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I, I first went off to the University of the West Indies, Mona campus, I was going there to study international relations. I don't know why that was my goal, but I, I, that's what I was going to do. And I didn't find a place there, but my second choice had been media and communication. And I remember going to my first media and communications class and thinking, wow, I am not supposed to be anywhere else. And there are different, or there are different instances like that throughout my life where a disappointment has led me to a great opportunity. So what started off as something that was hurtful or, or just didn't feel right turned out to be what I wanted. You know, sometimes we have our eyes on something and we're fixed on that thing, you know? We want that $100, we want that $100. And the detour leads us to a thousand or a million, you know, but we don't, we don't 
find it unless we are met with some kind of defeat or disappointment. And so over time, I have learned that, you know, feel sad, feel hurt, but keep going. Keep going and keep your eyes open for the lessons as you do. Thanks, Gold. I feel I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question we have here. How do you maintain a proper work-life balance without compromising your mental health? Oh, you're going deep, <laughs> deep. Um, so I think that work-life balance is a myth. I think work-life balance is a myth. It's a, it's a neat way of saying that you have to make time for different things, right? But when I think about a woman like my grandmother, who had seven children, who was a single parent, and who worked full-time, who went out to work after maternity leave of eight days, right? And so many other women like that, so many other people like that, our parents, grandmothers, who have been doing this for centuries and who just do what they have to do and don't complain. <laughs> I think I take my example from them. You know, I try to. What you have to battle with in that sense is the guilt. You know, every day when I'm in a meeting here and my daughter starts screaming, I feel myself having to say, I apologize for the noise, everyone. I apologize. And every day my, my colleagues tell me, uh, it's fine. We don't expect you to muzzle the children and shove them in a corner. We don't expect that. And so I think it's just about living the best that you can, doing the best that you can, spending time focused on things. Um, you know, when, when you set time to work, to actually work, when you set time to spend time with your family, actually do that and don't have interference between the two. I think everybody has to navigate their own, their own lives and find out what works best for them. There's no right answer. Wow, thank you, Golda. Not a question, but um, just thought I'd share some feedback since you sure. have a chat um, making waves, literally. <laughs> um, a student wants to say, um, thank you, Golda Lee Bruce. Presently, I'm going through so many challenges and your words have encouraged me to keep pushing. I really needed that, thanks. Yes, yes, keep pushing, keep pushing. Don't, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, guys, don't give up. Don't Dream give your up. big dreams, go after the things that you, you want for your life. There will be disappointment, there will be sorrow, but in the end, I feel like, um, in the end, I know that you will regret not having tried, try. Yeah, my favorite quote is from Theodore Roosevelt and it's, it says, um, oh my gosh, don't tell me it's come out of my mind completely. Uh, <laughs> it just came out of my mind. It's uh, daring greatly, but I will share it with you guys after this. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm sure it will come back. Another question. What yes. advice would you give to someone that is still struggling to figure out what they want to do with their life. Um, I'm trying to pull up that quote in the meantime. You know, we speak in frankly again, right? I'm in my bedroom after all. Um, for me, I think people do know what they want to do with their lives, but I feel like there's a lot of pressure from different voices, different people, different whatever that says, you should be this and not that. But I think if we quiet ourselves and we really listen and we think and we pray, you will find the thing that you are supposed to do, but you have to quiet the noise from everyone else, you know? And that's difficult, I understand. I understand that your parent might think, your parents might think you have to have a certain type of degree and get a certain type of job and you may be feeling a pull in the opposite direction. Um, think about it, ask a question, ask a question to yourself and say, what do I truly want to do? And I asked that question, I did a couple of years ago. I said, Golda, I, I felt unfulfilled even though everyone was looking on and saying, you know, you're doing so well and we love seeing you on TV and whatever, whatever. I felt unfulfilled and I had to ask a question, who am I? What do I do? 
And that's why I call myself a storyteller because I felt like at the very bottom of me, that's who I am. And that's what I want to do. And it manifests in the work that I do right now. It manifests in my writing and in different ways, but I had to really search myself. And so my advice to you is to search yourself, search yourself. If somebody just gave me the quotes, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short, and who at the end knows the achievement, knows the success of high achievement and does so while daring greatly. I'm getting it wrong, but the whole point is that you have to put your foot into the arena. You have to step forward. You have to be courageous. You have to go after what you want because it's either you are the person who's stepping into the arena or you are the person who's criticizing that person and standing in the way of their dreams. So decide who you want to be. Thank you for that prompting, guys. <laughs> I forgot my favorite quote. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Gulda. I see the students are following you. They were able to say, this is your quote. <laughs> yeah. They're on it. They're on it. On it. <laughs> um, well, do we have another question. I'm going to combine um, about three questions that I have um, on the chat here into one. It's the students are basically asking about how do they navigate the workplace when they are faced with co-workers that are more mature, but maybe have not gone to the university? Um, they want to look, um, know how, how do you deal with the disrespect they feel at times of more mature workers looking down at them due to their age? And how do they develop that assertiveness to go into the workplace despite all these negatives and do the work that they were called to do? Yes, that's a really good question. Um, and it's something that I've lived quite a few times over. And this is going to sound like a very strange response to that question, but I'm going to give it anyway. I think respect is the answer there. Your senior co-workers, the ones who've been there in the organization much longer than you, who may have degrees or may not have degrees, they want your respect. They want to know that you value what they bring to the table on a very human level, right? I feel that it's when we do not show respect, when we do not um, engage with them on, this, on a level playing field that it could trigger or make them feel like we do not value, that we don't value them, yes. Um, and there will always be extremely difficult people, right? There'll always be people who just not gonna budge, who does not care about the young upstart who's just come into the organization and who will not help you. And fine, fine. But I have found that when you give people the respect that they deserve, right? Because I used to frown when I heard, you know, you have to pay your dues, you have to pay your dues. I'm like, what dues I have to pay? I don't have to pay more. You know, it was so crazy to me, this whole idea of paying dues. And over time, I saw it. I saw it. Experience counts for a lot. Being in a job for a while and seeing things change and navigating those changes accounts for a lot. And we tend to, as young people, I believe I'm a millennial, I think so. Um, we tend to, you know, not be thinking about experience very much, you know, putting everything above it. I think we have to respect the experience, the opinions, the contributions of others, whomever they are, wherever you work, respect people and that respect will be meted out to you. Maybe not by a couple, right? Maybe there will always be <laughs> holdouts, but I think respect is the answer to that question. Wow, excellent. Really great questions we are getting. Yes, I have this line going down my face and I would like to get rid of it, but if you're okay with that. <laughs> Um, another question, which is um, sort of an addition to that, it's the um, going into the workplace as a young woman. Yeah. And she is going into a very male dominated organization. You know, how do you continue to be, she says, how do you continue to be humble? and teachable 
but also not let other persons walk all over you? Right, very good question. And I think it allows me the opportunity to clarify something. Humility and teachability is not, does not equal allowing people to walk over you. It, it's not the same. You can humbly and directly correct someone who has wronged you. As a matter of fact, I think that that is actually an act of humility. Being clear with someone and saying, I don't like the way that you spoke to me. Can you please not speak to me that way? We, don't, we haven't worked together for very long. I, I don't know you very well, but I generally don't like to be spoken to that way. I hope that we can resolve this and move forward. There's humility in standing up for yourself, right? And my grandma always used to tell me, she said, you know, <laughs> monkey, you know a tree to climb, right? And you have to go into an organization or wherever you are and show what kind of tree you are. What kind mm -hmm. of tree are you? Can people talk to you however they want, say whatever they want about you? Will you stand up for yourself? Will you do so with respect? Will you do so clearly and kindly? So it, it's not the same. We, we, we tend to think about humility as being some kind of doormat. Not at all, not at all. It's very, very different. Excellent. Um, how do you keep going after constant disappointment? Yeah. yeah. That's a really hard one because you're a human being after all, right? And you begin to, it wears on you. It wears on you. But I think this is where stories help. You know, in my bio, you read that I believe in the power of story to, stories to motivate. And there are so many of those stories that you hear about people who tried and who tried and who tried and who failed and who tried and who failed. And then somehow, some way they succeeded, you know? And I think it's important to inspire yourself. You know, being the person who is grounded and who can inspire themselves is really huge. Mental resilience is huge. You know, knowing who you are, standing up for yourself and, and being able to pull inspiration from within you is, is huge. It's so valuable. I know many people who, you know, I used to know this one person in particular, uh, we worked together, who would, would dress in the most beautiful clothing. And she would always be like, do you think I look nice? Do you think I look nice? I said, do you think you look nice? Mm. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself in order to make it around disappointment, especially continuous disappointment. But stories help, you know, having the counsel of people who have your best interest at heart, who feed into your life, who, who speak words of inspiration, that is important. Having sources that you can draw from, strong faith, people around you who will share those types of stories with you. But remember, so, 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 who tried and tried and tried, and then look, look how well they're doing. That is important. It's not easy, but I think that it helps. Wow, thank you, Bruno. Um... Yes, love yourself and value yourself. I just saw something pop up on the screen. Yes, yes. Perseverance is key. Yes, yes. Another question. How do young people stay motivated for their goals with the current climate of the country? More specifically, a high unemployment rate. Hmm. That's good. Um, so I'll tell you about me, right? I'll tell you about where I am and how I tend to think about things like that. I think that external factors and listening to the news is important, right? Having a sense of what's going on is important, yes. but even more important is you and your goals and what you are doing. You could very well be, you maybe are the exception to the unemployment rule. But if you allow everything that is going on, every sad story, every defeat that someone else has suffered to come into your mind, 
then it's likely that you're not going to have the mental capacity and the discipline to focus on what you need to be doing. I, people laugh at me when I say this and my mother, she still can't understand it, but I don't watch every movie and I don't read every book and I don't listen to every person. I don't follow every person. I follow things and I try to listen to things and do things that inspire me and that push me towards my purpose. So if there is a movie about, I don't know, I, I can't think about it right now, but I, that I think is just unproductive to put into my mind, I'm not going to put it there. It's not passive for me anymore. I realize that my mind is like a kind of sponge. And so in order for me to focus on, okay, I would like to write a book this year, I need to focus on that and not be listening to all of the people who've written books and the books have stayed in their drawers and they haven't been published. No, I'm the exception to the rule. Yes. Thank you, Golda. Let's all say it, guys. I'm the exception to the rule. I'm the exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read it um, because we have a lot of comments um, coming in as well. So this person said, you inspire us, Miss Golda. Thank you for speaking. Do you have any advice for students who might not get through with their dream job? Mm. <laughs> um, you know, I once read in a book that life, and I, I always remember the quote, life is a big round thing, right? So it's, it's, it's a thing that's working like this. And when are you going to determine that you didn't get through with your dream job? When you're 25, when you're 35, when you're 45, with 40 years ahead of you, you don't know what the future holds. I don't think that it makes sense to, you know, put a limit on, on when you have to achieve things. That, that's, I think, what leads to a lot of anxiety and depression. You know, you have to live your own life, allow things to unfold, continue to go after your goals even if you may feel defeated at times. And who is to say that your dreams won't change? Mm. Who is to say that your dreams won't take a different form? You know, when I was 12 years old, I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a singer so bad. And then I decided up in my 20s to sing. And I went into the studio and I sang for eight hours. I produced a song. The song was on the radio and I realized thank you, Jesus, that I am not a singer. Because I realized how much work it is, right. how much it takes from you physically, and how much you have to put into actually putting the music out there. And so my dream changed. Your dream can change. You know, you can evolve. You can be different. It's, I don't think you should put a limit on it. You know, I haven't achieved my dream job, so I'm a failure. Not at all. Not at all. Right. Excellent. Um, I think we have... Um, one more, well, uh, as I said, one more, I'm seeing more, but let me ask this one. Um, <laughs> because I may not have time for many more. So right. I think we could one do more. one more, <laughs> but because I, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to know how young persons can deal with anxiety when entering a new job or environment. Anxiety is fair. All right. Doctors call it anxiety and the Bible calls it fear. So I tend to call it fear. Right. And the opposite of fear is faith. It is believing. It is believing. So you go into any in work environment and you, you psych out yourself, eh? which is what I do a lot. Right. You psych out yourself and you believe a different story. You don't believe that these people are going to sideline me and I'm going to be the odd man out. No, you go in there and you believe the following. I'm going to be a success at this job. I'm going to be resourceful for my, for a resource for my colleagues. I'm going to actually make friends. I'm going to leave here better than I found it. Tell yourself a different story. Believe that different story and have that faith. That faith takes so much energy that it will cancel your fear. Tell a different story, you know? Excellent. Um, I want to call on our director, um, the director of the division, Dr. Deidre Charles. Um, she wants to pop in here. <laughs> Hi, Doc, and make Hi, Dr. Charles. Hi, Goldalee. Hi, thank you. I was listening. I went from one meeting to the next, and 
I was so caught up and listening and enjoying this whole program. Thank you, Miss Lewis, as well. And thank you for inspiring our young people and our students. And while you were speaking, a few questions ago about the age difference when the students enter the workplace to all the colleagues. You hit the nail right on the head. And I wanted to say to the students, the older, your older work, work colleagues is also looking to you, the younger one with the new ideas and the bright ideas. So it's a trust thing. And all they want, and all I want to say to our, to the younger ones going into the workplace, you also learn so much from them and they want to teach you. So the, 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 barri the barriers we build and the wall we build sometimes run in your mind is to be open to receive and to give. You know, go open, say, I want to learn from that person. I want to learn from the experiences and what they have to say. And yes. you share yours as well. So I just wanted to say that. And I wanted to also say that dreams and careers come in different packages. When you were 12, you wanted to be a singer and you had that package in your mind in one way. And it might not have been about the singing, but it might have been inspiring people through song. You are still inspiring people. It's just that you're not singing. So yeah. the packaging could be so different, students. I thought I wanted to be a counselor. And I found myself in student service where I see and counsel so many other students. Yes. So the packaging may be different, but the core of what you really want to do is still there. Yes. So I just wanted to add that to, to yeah, this. Thank you for that. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Yes, that's okay. so true. Um, students, you know, for those of you who have done sessions with her, just to add to what Golda and Dr. Charles have said is that there's always, always trust me. When we do career mapping, you will be able to see a common thread that passes through each little career step you made. And if you just pull that thread, it all, it all comes together. So you just as Golda and Doc said, you ha just have to be open. Yeah. So Golda, um, we have like a million questions, which we cannot <laughs> all answer. But um, since the students, um, I don't want them to start drumming. We want more. We <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see, guys. We'll really see if we can um, get Golda back in for another session for the wider student population. But I just wanted to take this opportunity, Golda, to thank you for really reaching the students at their level and pouring into them and changing lives with your stories. You know, a lot of times, sometimes you read bios and it's just a bio, but your bio is your truth. And we really want to thank you for that. Um, the students have expressed it um, in the chat. And on behalf of the UE and Republic Bank, we really want to say thank you for empowering the students and giving them that opportunity to make a difference. I know today they will certainly, yes. as the Republic Bank says, you know, understand that they have the power to make the difference, not just in their lives, but in the world in which they live. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I have to go off now, yes. but I just wanted to end by saying thank you to the organiz organizers of this event. Um, I, I feel honored to have been invited and also just to all of the students listening and to everyone who was participating, there is something inside of you that is only inside of you. It is individual to you. It is a, a call a blessing, a purpose, call it whatever you want, but there's something in there. And maybe you're resisting it, maybe you know what it is, maybe you haven't identified it yet. Identify it, secure it, and go after it. The world is waiting to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Golda. Great. So students, we have some more headsets. Um, Republic Bank's wonderful gift to us and UWE Bank. So we are going to ask some more questions here. Um, can we do the picker? Can we use the picker to draw? Oh, it's ready. Okay, let's do the picker for some headsets. And another wonderful price, I'll tell you. 
<coughs> after. So we are going to give away two headsets. So let's roll the picker. Kanisha Ramden. Okay, so Kanisha, you are one of the winners of the wonderful headsets. Can we roll the picker again? Kezia Kid, you are also one of the winners of the headsets. In addition, students, part of what we will be doing this year is helping you to develop your online presence. And part of that is having an appropriate professional headshot. So we have partnered with a photographer, a professional photographer, and he is giving away, well, he's giving away a number of headshots, but we are going to give away two of those headshots, if I'm correct, yes. Two mm -hmm. of those headshots, headshot. three. three, sorry, yeah. three headshots today using the picker as well. So three people, you're gonna get the opportunity to have your professional headshots for your online uh, career profiles done, yeah? So this is a uh, Shania Ramroop. You're gonna get a professional headshot. We'll pass that information on, on to you. Rafaelia Boomer, I hope I said that correctly. You're also gonna get the professional headshot. And Chavi Ramlogan. So you're all gonna get professional headshots. We're gonna ask some questions now. I'm gonna give away another one of the Republic Bank's gift bags, yes? What is the Republic Bank tagline? What's the Republic Bank tagline? Yes, 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 everybody, woo! Let me, who's the first one who said it? We're the one for you, Sachin Duki. Everybody, ooh, everybody knows it. We have a whole lot of gifts, guys, but not that many. Let me see who was the second person. Since we have so many, ooh, we are the one, we are the one. Who was the second person that put it in? So it's Sachin and- Christoph Pedesi. Christoph Pedesi. So you're both gonna get this. If you don't want anything in it, I'll gladly take it because listen guys, the things in those bags, wonderful gifts on behalf of our sponsor Republic Bank with the power to make the difference. This year, the University of the West Indies is, is celebrating or should I, should I correct me? Was it last year? A very important milestone in terms of being a university. It's 2020 to 2021. 2020 to, to, ooh, ooh, to 60 years. Quite correct. Let me go back. Who was the first person? Denise. 60 years. Quite correct, Denise. So you will be getting one of the UE Republic Bank sponsored packages. Another question, where did Golda, yes, 60 years, where did Golda pursue her first internship? Quite correct, TV6. Who has it? You all just said Golda, you're putting Mona, you're putting but um, someone will check to see who's the first person there that put TV6. Was it Tamara? I think it's Tamara was the first person, quite correct. Another question, another one of our wonderful packages from Republic Bank is gonna be up for grabs here. Golda said she gave us her three core virtues. What were those three core virtues? 
Okay, yes, quite correct. I'm going back up, quite correct. But the first person is discipline, traceability, not exactly. Felixia Ali, quite correct. Discipline, teachability, and humility. Excellent. So students, a very, very interesting session today. Just to pull together some of the things that Golden Libru said, everything you want is on the other side of consistency. Set your goals and go after them. Decide what they are, write them down and go after them. Don't stop. Keep going. If you're anxious, quiet yourselves. Ask yourself, what kind of tree am I? Inspire yourself and pull your inspiration from within. So we want to thank you on behalf of our sponsor, Republic Bank and their Power to Make the Difference program and the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. We want to thank you all for coming out. We want to please remind you all there are a number of sessions coming up. For those of you who have some questions about going into the workplace and dealing with that anxiety, remember on February 4th, at 1.30, we would have sent the links out already. We do have a session on interview anxiety and how do you handle that anxiety as you enter the new place. We have a number of other sessions coming up. Log on to the website sca.uwi.edu slash wow, register. Once you register, you will have access to all the videos, and we post there all the sessions that are upcoming. Yes, um, as I said, there'll be a link coming out to you in about two to three weeks where we want you to begin practicing your online virtual interviewing skills. There'll be questions as well on the, the platform. You can select questions or if you want, we can set up an interview for you where you can practice and see how you are performing in a virtual environment. And after that, a little later on in February, you will have your virtual interview sessions, the practice sessions with employers. Stay tuned, we'll also have um, vacancies that are coming up that we'll post or that we will send your resumes Keep working on your resumes. A number of you have asked for additional bootcamp sessions. We will look at holding some of those, but know that we have posted the resume writing sessions on the platform. So the bootcamp sessions are not actual writing sessions. For the bootcamp sessions, you come in with your resume that you would have written from the resume writing sessions and we just take you through like a drill sergeant in terms of what you need to change, how your resume is looking, how it's set up, and we take you through that process. So now we want to encourage you, keep reaching for the stars. We want to encourage you to use this opportunity for upskilling, do short courses, volunteer, and know as well that the world has not stopped revolving. Even yesterday, we received requests for resumes. So guys, if your resume is not, you have not uploaded it, we won't be able to forward it. The market is not as agile as it has been before, but it has not stopped. So even more so, you want to stand out and ask yourself, what do I have in my pocket, in my bag, in my desk that can help me stand out and take the opportunity to acquire some extra skills, some extra knowledge and competencies. 
please reach out to us if you have any questions or you want any help in your career mapping or decision making. Yes? So on behalf of Republic Bank, the University of the West Indies and the Division of Student Services and Development, we want to thank you for coming out today and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Have a good one. Bye.